We have breaking news that Nikita Zadorov was traded from the Calgary Flames to the Vancouver Canucks. We'll discuss the real reason behind this trade and much more coming up on this episode of Hatcher HQ. But before we get into that, just want to say that 83.9% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you're looking for a home to daily NHL content, look no further. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, become part of the community here. So we'll be here all season long. Keep me up to date on what's happening around the league. But with that said, let's get right into the main topic of the video today. And that is the Canucks trade for Zadorov. And as we take a look here, General Manager uh, Patrick Alvin announced today that the Canucks have acquired uh, Nikita Zadorov from the Calgary Flames in exchange for a fifth round pick in 2024 uh, from Chicago, which would be Chicago's best pick in that draft uh, at the for, after fifth round selection and a third round pick uh, in 2026 from Calgary. And Mark, uh, I just want to get your initial reaction here. I know Zadorov has been a name that we've tossed around here a lot on the channel for potential uh, trade destinations and he finally found one here landing in vancouver i think it's an awesome trade for the canucks the big thing is too when you look at this trade they did give up their third and a fifth but this fifth was just a part of the pavilion trade this was a guy that was playing bottom six minutes he wasn't getting a lot of reps on this team really so they got rid of this contract got a fifth pack use one of their own thirds and ultimately just trade a pavilion to clean up ca uh, clear up cap space use their own third and then brought in a guy like Zadorov that i think is going to fit in f awesome on this uh, blue line yeah i definitely have to agree with you i believe calgary only acquired him for a third back when they traded for him so i mean they did get a little bit extra back with that with that fifth round pick but i really do like this trade i really do think that this is a guy you need on your team to potentially go for a stanley cup run and i really do think that he solidifies this decor here in vancouver uh, but we're going to take a look at zadorov stats just in case uh you're new to the zadorov hype train here he's more of a stay at home defenseman uh really physical uh defender uh, so far this season, he has 41 hits and 19 blocks uh, with uh, 6 points in 21 games. But last season, he had 174 hits, 75 blocks, and he also had 21 points with 14 of them being goals. And I know we've talked about here, like you said, they got rid of Anthony Bo Beauvillier to bring uh, to bring in uh, Zadorov here. And as we take a look, Zadorov's cap hit is $3.75 million, so they took on the full uh, extent of that cap. So I think that was the big reason why Calgary kind of went for this deal. Uh, they didn't really have to retain anything, so they just shipped them off to Vancouver, and I really do like this trade. I think it's a, a big win for the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, the big thing is, too, a lot of rumors were floating around that Calgary was looking for a young defenseman that could make an immediate impact, maybe a young four that could do the same. And the thing with the Canucks, they don't move a guy like any of this, honestly. A guy like Jet Wu was a guy that I figured might be going back in this type of trade if they were to get Zadorov. And they got the deal done without a guy like Jet Wu, who is going to fit in perfectly into Calgary in the near future. That could be this season if another injury happens, maybe next year. But keeping your prospects and only moving out a couple mid to late picks, I think this is an awesome pickup for uh, Vancouver. This is a guy that can clear out the front of the net, He'll lay hits. He'll sell seats just for people to see this train of a man run around hitting people. And the big thing is, too, he's a defensive guy that can still put up a couple points. I think it was close to 10 goals or maybe just at 10 goals last year. So he's not a guy that's going to go out and just be lost on offense. He's a guy that's going to be great on defense for you, lay the body, block shots, and still be able to put up some points for the team. Yeah, definitely. He has a cannon of a shot back there, too, and he lets that go. It's probably one of the fastest in the league, in my opinion. I really do like this guy. Uh, a guy who uh, is my type of defenseman. I like those stay-at-home physical defenders, and this is what you get with this guy. And like you said, uh, another name that was tossed around here was Niels Ho uh, Hoaglander. Uh, he was tossed around a little bit, maybe, to potentially get moved to Calgary. He was looking to retool but I mean they just needed to get this deal done because I mean Sidorov did request a trade out of there so I mean they had to kind of give him up for uh, the best offer they could get at the time yeah that's a big thing when a guy comes out and requests a trade this earlier on in the season it's hard to keep him just to look for the best offer I know a lot of teams were in on Sidorov but with the Canucks being able to take this full contract 
uh, Calgary not having to retain so they could use this spot to maybe retain on a bigger deal come trade deadline if they're still selling. I think it's a win-win for both teams. I think Calgary might have been able to get a tiny bit more, maybe a prospect toss in, maybe upgrade that fifth to a fourth, maybe two thirds. But overly, I think both teams win. Uh, Calgary moves on from Sidorov. He is happy. And then Vancouver also gets their guy that just slots straight into the lineup immediately. Yeah, and we're going to look into that now where we uh, suspect him to be slotting in that lineup and as we take a look here, we uh, see Nikita Zadorov uh, paired with Tyler Myers. And when you're looking at that right now, Mark, I would hate to be out, out on the ice against this D pairing because you're just going to get leveled every time you're going up the ice. Yeah, the big thing with this is I know earlier on in the season, we've seen a lot of success from the Canucks. And this was due to the top line of Hughes and Hironik just being one of the best in the league. They were uh, amazing. They were outstanding, probably the best pairing we've seen all season. And they had to break this up after the Carson Soucy injury. So with Soucy out, we did see the lineup kind of change a little bit, especially on the D pairings. So getting Sidorov in as a almost Susie replacement to play with Myers, Hirona can go back up on the top. You still have Ian Cole and Juleson. Someone else can slide in on this right side down there. But it adds so much flexibility in the sense that when you do get Susie back, you can still put him with Myers. Sidorov would be an outstanding third pairing defenseman. And I think overall, just getting that top line together of Hironik and Hughes is a win enough. And then you also add in the fact that you get Zadorov. That's going to be great to play next to Tyler Myers. If that doesn't really work, you can still kind of line juggles. But I think the big thing is getting this top line or top pairing back together. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you there. I really do think Quinn Hughes could potentially win the Norris Trophy this year. So getting uh, his D partner back with him uh, is really going to help with that. They did really look uh, to click very uh, early on in the season, and it's just going to continue to to be that way now that they're going to get back together with this trade. And like you said, I mean, Zadorov is a great player, a great stay-at-home defenseman, a guy you need on your team uh, to be successful, and I'm really excited for him uh, to be in his new home home here in Vancouver and to see what he can do because I mean if he shows out this year he could potentially get an extension uh, for next season as well and I'm really excited for this Vancouver Canucks team I really do think that they may have the best chance uh, or one of the best chances to win the the Stanley Cup here and bring it back home to Canada this year so I'm really excited to see what this Canucks team can do but we're going to get into our next topic here and that is the offers that were left on the table and as we take a look here the, the Toronto Maple had a trade offer on the table for Nikita Zadorov. The Leafs and other interested teams needed Calgary to retain salary, though uh, by clearing it, it, uh, space in the Beauvillier trade, Vancouver could take on Zadorov's full $3.75 million cap hit. And Mark, I know as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, I know that kind of sucks to hear. I know you're really excited to try to get Zadorov to Toronto, but uh, obviously that's not going to happen right now. Yeah, I'm also a Canucks fan. It's uh, 1A and then number 2. I wouldn't say the uh, Canucks are the same as the Leafs. But overall, I love this trade for Vancouver. Like I said, I know there's a lot of teams were on in, in on this guy. He was a hot guy. Everyone wanted him. But the big thing here was the retained. They didn't have to retain any money. And Calgary's able to use this extra money. Maybe this isn't another retained, another trade you take on a bad contract. We kind of seen Montreal take on a guy like Sean Monaghan, who everyone thought might have been a bad contract, end up working out. They'll probably end up shipping this guy off for another pick. So Calgary could be in the same situation where they can continue to build assets, take assets, trade them again, and just build up this while slowly retooling with the current team they have. So like I said, Awesome for Calgary. They clear that $4 million almost, which is great. They get a couple picks out of it. Useless cap space. That's the biggest thing in the NHL everyone needs and don't have is cap space. So this works for Calgary. And then also, like I said, this is a great Susie replacement for Vancouver. So I think this is a win-win for both teams, and it's a loss for every team that ultimately didn't get Sidorov. Yeah, and, you know, you're speaking the truth there, obviously. I do think that Calgary's going to be able to do something with these assets that they got in this trade, uh, whether it's, you know, bring in another guy, try to retool, whether they're just going to sell and try to go into a rebuild. It's really going to be interesting 
interesting to see what the Calgary Flames do from here on out because they do have a solid roster. So maybe bringing in uh, a few, you know, veteran guys, maybe, uh, you know, could really help boost this team uh, up and get some wins and maybe get them back into the playoff hump because they do have a really good team up there now. And I really hope that Calgary can start to be a little bit uh, more successful than they have been. But like you said, bringing in a guy like Sidora here to Vancouver is only going to win games. It's only going to help them more on the defensive end of the game uh, of the puck. So it's really, it's really exciting to be a Vancouver Canucks fan right now. Really wish I was one and not a Montreal Canadiens fan because I mean, this team is so fun to watch right now and, and it's, they're just going to keep getting better throughout the season with this trade. Yeah, that's the big thing. The Canucks are one of the top teams in the West. They had a great hot start. Scoring's been crazy. The defense has looked great. And just adding to the defense and hoping these ways continue could be massive. They could be looking at maybe the President's Trophy, one of the top teams in the West. And ultimately, they're going to be a team pushing for, you know, the Western Conference Finals, Stanley Cup, and hopefully they can end up winning it. The next thing on the agenda now is to get Pedersen re extended. Uh, I know that's probably what they're focused on now after, you know, kind of solidifying their team now for the rest of the season. You might see a few tweaks here and there, but I'm really excited for this Vancouver Canucks. I'm going to say Canucks for the Cup. Come on, we want it back in Canada. Really think this team has a good shot at it. But we're going to get in everybody's favorite topic here, and that is comment of the day. And the comment of the day today is, goes to Oilers. I uh, know Oilers has a comment of the day on the Canucks video. He said, I'd love to see him on the Oilers. Uh, I got the, this news first from your channel. He's obviously talking about the Corey Perry video we did earlier today. If you missed it, make sure to go check it out. But thanks for your support, Oilers. We see it down in the comment section all the time. Uh, we love seeing all your guys' comments. So we just want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this trade? What do you think about the, the, the Canucks' future? I'm really excited to see how the rest of the season plays out. So let us know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're going to try to hit 3,000 subscribers before Christmas. Uh, so make sure to go down and subscribe if you're already not. Give us an early Christmas gift. We'd really appreciate it. But uh, in saying that, I've been Casey alongside my co-host, Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.